G'day everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron Christie David, and yes, I run a mortgage broking business called Atelier Wealth, where we specialize in helping property investors start out and scale up their portfolios. But there's also another side to it, which is helping people buy their own homes in order to then have enough equity to then pull that and then to buy investment properties and continue to scale their portfolio in that fashion as well, because quite frankly, we all need somewhere to live. And so to be able to buy your home in the suburb that you want at the price that you want to pay quite often means engaging a buyer's agent. And buyer's agents have often, or in the past, been seen for someone that was a little bit maybe more affluent or at that top end of town. But I can tell you right here, right now, we have had plenty of first-time owners, upgraders that have engaged the service of the buyer's agents and working with the buyer's agent has one or only improved their chances of finding the dream home but also taking some of that heat out of negotiation and finding out what, if it's a couple, what each couple or each person wants to buy. If it's a solo person, maybe accessing or dealing with real estate agents when you don't have that skill set as well. Someone that does have that skill set is Rebecca Jane Hall from Hallmark Property. G'day, Beck, how you doing? (laughs) Aaron, it's great to be here, very, very well. Yeah, long time friends, uh, huge respect, admiration for what what you've been doing. Mm. Uh, with your business, four years young, uh, but property is something that has been in your blood, in your veins for a long, long time. Because I know that you've you've got a history uh, as a family and being in property. So what I want to do is hear a little bit about the RJ, Rebecca Jane or RJH Experience. story, um, learn about your journey, not only property, but uh, professionally and, and mm-hmm. now what you're doing. Uh, with your clients as well. So welcome. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Um, Okay, so Hallmark Property uh, was born out of a need to help the other aspect of buying a property, so the buyer itself. Um, We all hear about real estate agents going to sell your property and commercial agents and, you know, there there was a need for, I guess, the buyer to be represented. And on that occasion, Hallmark was grown out of that um, I guess going out of that. Opportunity, frustration. Frustration yeah. a lot when I used to be selling, we'll, we'll step back a bit, I used to be a selling agent for many moons. So yeah. I have worn all the hats you could probably have in property yeah. in such a way that I yeah. understood how a selling agent works and how, you know, to, to sell a property. Yeah. But as I was working um, consistently with the buyer management side of things, I I then, gen- I then found the need that, hang on a minute, these guys are getting left behind. You know, there's only one property for one buyer. That's but exactly right. But the other 20-something miss out. Yeah, miss yeah. out. And also they want to know why they missed out. Correct. So let's say, for instance, you had a, a property that went to auction. Obviously, the reason why they missed out, A, they couldn't afford it. Mm. Um, but also, let's just draw on a point there as well. They're at an auction where they thought they had a chance of buying it. Mm. However... Unfortunately, they just didn't have the pricing nailed down yeah. to know that it was going to actually present, you know, or go over budget for them. So they spent all this time going to auction upon auction time, upon auction. The emotional energy emotional. that's gone with it. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you get stuck doing that. And suddenly, like you said, you've got those 20 other buyers still waiting to buy yeah. and they're not understanding why they haven't bought. Spot on. So for us, it was uh, a need to fill that gap to help the buyer side. Yeah, spot on. And someone that can maybe navigate blind spots, which is, well, hang on, what you're saying is you want this property, but you're going to quickly outgrow that property, for example. Uh, the example I use is maybe someone buying a three-bedder mm-hmm. or a two-bedder townhouse. You know they're going to outgrow it because they want to start a family, for example. Uh, and now the population, you know, popularity of working from home, maybe you want somebody with a study, for example, yeah. that you can grow into. And, and quite often they don't see that because they're buying this immediate purchase, but I guess we've worked with enough people who go, but the pattern is going to be that you may, you may outgrow that or that property is too small. The aspect, you can't renovate or you mm-hmm. can't do this on that property as well. So Yeah, so when, when we look at that, we, let's say we have a client who's um, a professional couple, they've moved into a two-bedroom plus study. Yeah. Um, but our questions around that client are, you know, let's example, Aaron, you know, are you growing your family? Yes, we are. We're not expecting to have children for another two to three years. So the actual getting into the marketplace is a real crucial aspect of making sure our buyers are buying well in the marketplace and getting in. That's another another equation. And also once they've got in, like you said, going back back to, you know, expanding and growing and Mm. outgrowing the apartment, what's the next step? So the natural curve for our clients is coming into four to five years of their purchase are, oh, we've just had a newborn. This two-bedroom is 
somewhat right. not as, it's as not, it's comfortable not working for anymore. Us. Yeah. It's not really working for us. And then they reach out to us and we've had that relationship with them in the mm. past. Um, and then we're always just... You know, you know, having having a Q and A with them over over years, just uh, yeah. so when they're ready to punch on through and buy the next property and upgrade, we're there to help them. Yeah, nice yeah. one. One of your sweet spot areas is the Northern Beaches. Uh, sure is. Yeah, which has been uh, what did we, one of the high performers Lifestyle. in the country. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, during during COVID as mm. well. Everyone may be seeking that sea change, but still kind of very close to Sydney as well. Um, I mean, we touched. We spoke just briefly before about such tight vacancy rates mm-hmm. for renters mm-hmm. uh, and rentals as well, which means it becomes even more high demand. Uh, take us through, what did you see through COVID and what was really driving that demand? And as the market now just changes a little bit, mm. what do you think is going to be like, I guess, the next iteration for the Northern Beaches? I, I think, you know, like, like you mentioned, I mean, when people, when COVID hit, what what we, we were led to understand and also believe living through it as well mm. was a lot of businesses and their staff had to remain at home. Yeah. And with that process <laughs> came uh, a lot of people wanting to expand and get out of the home, their existing home. They realised that being in that environment without the space that they needed to be able to run around with kids, etc., yeah. then gave them the tipping point to get out yeah and i think they were all pulling their hair out from when they came on to us we were had people just going oh we, we you know we, we can't the seams. We, we can't stand it at the moment we need something bigger we're, we're happy to move wherever you know yeah, and okay. so we we ended up being um i guess pulled into this heightened frenzy as you know you would have gone through it as well within the, the finance, the finance side, side. Yeah, yeah. and it, it was a need it was a need to get out we're climbing the walls we want to get out and we want to move and we want a lifestyle change. Who knew how long this was going to last? Correct. So, um, and then, you know, as, as, as interest rates were so low, the borrowing was so People's easy. People's borrowing capacities were so high. Yes. Access to money was money very was easy. easy. Um, which then gave owners who were selling in those um, uh, areas along the northern beaches opportunity to capitalise and move on and sell and buy in the same market. Yeah. And when they did, um, that's when a lot of buyers came to us and found it difficult to purchase because there were so many buyers in the marketplace and uh, they just couldn't buy. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And for, from our perspective, potential our clients and potential buyers were mm. going, well, what's what's the pro- uh, premise of a buyer's agent? Because mm. one, who's going to list the property off market? They're going to take it to market and try and get the best price they can. It's another fee when I'm trying mm. to kind of watch every penny I've got to then go towards the deposit or the next price, for example. I was like, look, maybe there's, I definitely know there's a relationship that happens between a buyer's agent and a real estate agent that yeah. I can't have as a one-off buyer. And the next one is those those relationships open doors that wouldn't be open to myself as well. And maybe there's a strategy that's involved, whether it's mm-hmm. pre-auction, whether it is auction, whether it's a go-to-market strategy as well. So take me through when you've had clients talk to you about that yeah. initial hesitation going, why would I engage a buyer's agent versus DIY? What's, what's, what's your thoughts? What's the go? Yeah. Well, this is, if I had a dollar for <laughs> yeah. every time someone which is why says I asked that, question. which is a great question. Yeah. Look, we get this asked a lot. Oh, oh, why would we engage you, you know, based on the fact that we're seeing everything online? Correct. We're seeing, you know, database. Well, they we're, seeing everything online. We're, yeah. we're seeing it. And I said, well, that's my point. You are actually seeing everything online, but is it meeting or ticking the boxes that, your criteria and does, does it meet your brief? And invariably, they're, they're in the, the same buyer pool as everyone else is looking online. Mm. When they come to a buyer's agent, we've got the relationships already in place. We know our customers so well mm. that um, and also our, um, our agents and agencies along where we, we're buying in. We know them so well that we have those relationships set up so we're able to get into a deeper aspect of the marketplace. Um, one, you know, just to put it blunt, you know, plainly, when you've got an owner wanting to sell, there might be a number of reasons why they don't choose to sell on the the same channels, you know, realestate.com, yeah, okay. yep. domain. They might not want, and this is this is quite common and, you know, this is the thing. It, it's quite common that an owner doesn't want any of their neighbours to know they're moving. Spot on. It's, yeah. People don't believe it, but I'm like, it is very true. It's absolutely true. Yeah. Um, so another reason. So one, they'll get a buyer's. The agent might have the listing. They'll do a quiet sale. Correct. We're, we're moving into an area where it, 
one shoe doesn't always fit. Mm. So there's so many other avenues now, which is exciting because you can sell your, choose to sell your property however you like now, yeah. um, whatever platform you want to use. And what that does is there's a lot of buyers out there who don't understand that. So when we speak to the buyer um, at hand, we're having those conversations and they're, they're saying that, Rebecca, but why should we use you? Yeah. So we have, um, you know, a full, I guess, a strategy and a process that we have. We cast the net far and wide. We over, you know, unturning every single stone, not just your real estate.com and domain. Yeah, um, and that is that comes from years, 20 years of databases, which has come from experience back in the selling yeah, realm nice. of things. Yep. Um, and also comes from the team that I've employed to work as a team together. They come from their, you know, second tier databases. Yeah. Um, and we're getting owner to, to us coming straight to us saying, have you got a buyer for our property? We kind of don't want to use a real estate agent. We want it on the quiet. Um, at that point, you know, we'll pop into the house and see it, um, see if it meets any of our buyer's needs. I mean, we had an awesome example just recently. We had a client about four or five years ago, I think, where we crossed paths because they were in a um, in a an area of expertise such as a surveyor. He was a surveyor. Right. So we met that way. Yeah. Wasn't selling his house. So we said, you know, kept in touch. We sent him some business and vice mm. versa. And it was a really great energy behind that. Yeah. That true relationship. True relationships, yeah. how they're built. We get a call from him about probably four months ago. Hey, thinking about selling our property. It's in an absolute great area, Lambie Heights. Yeah. And I said, oh, thank you so much for calling us. Do you have a buyer? So what happened is they, they exercised their knowledge in being in the in- industry themselves yeah. and, and got a general idea of the range they wanted to sell in. And our buyer was in that range and we transacted straight away. Nice. Completely off the grid. Yeah. Okay. And also our clients. And if are, someone wanted to buy that, they would never have had access to no, it. No, that's They wouldn't right. have known that property is sold. And, and there, are, there are so many people looking to buy in Alambi Heights. There's so many people looking to, get, yeah. to buy in Balgala, Seaforth, yeah. right? And again, they're just going straight to the portals or the agents. Yeah, correct. And they're absolutely bypassing another arm that is, um, yeah, that, that's uncovering a lot of property. And the challenge is you have to stay on a set of real estate agents' radar. It's like, Ooh. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> they're listing, they get all these inquiries. Yeah. I'm still here. And it's yeah. like, how do you stand out in such a crowded sea of buyers? Yeah. I feel like buyers' agents gives you that unfair Well, we advantage. elevate. Yeah, yeah we, but, we elevate and we move our clients into the box seat. We're yeah. just playing chess. How do we get this person from Correct. here to here to make sure that they're the buyer for this property? Yeah, nice. And um, there's a lot of, you know, 20, 20 to 30 questions that happen before. But that all happens with our team. It can happen within one hour. Mm. So our team is in the property, showing the client the property on the same day, getting the building and pest in on the same day. Yeah, nice. And then within that, 24-hour frame, it's transacted, contract checked, signed, deposit paid. Beautiful. And by the end of that, I mean, you can imagine after someone has been looking, even for two months with kids, <laughs> it doesn't matter, two <laughs> months, one year, the 12 novel, months. The novelty wears off very quickly. Let me just say, yeah. from an experience share, you think looking inside of people's houses and every you know, Saturdays, grabbing a coffee, the novelty wears off pretty damn <laughs> the quickly. Uh, the nappy changes frustrations in Frustrations between. between a couple can then start to show up and it's yeah. like ultimately what happens is you compromise. Oh. It's like let's just buy a damn property and you end up maybe compromising after yeah. a while as well, right? And, and you don't want to compromise. We say to our clients it, it might be that our experience has managed to get you through a, a house that, you know, we showed them one house. And that has happened, you know, yeah. within the first, we met the brief, we knew it was for them, we showed, and they went, oh, but hang on, is there anything else? Okay, yeah. But is there? <laughs> this it's, is like matchmaking, this, you know, like, you asked, yeah. for, you asked for a 9 out of 10, I got you a 9 out of 10. No, we've got you. What else is in the market? market yeah. We're saying, we have to say, this is the house for you. Yeah. And they go, but hang on, and, and then they realise, yeah. oh, well, you're right, actually, um, which is great. But, yeah, just, just going back, it's, it's yeah. elevating and making sure our clients are a lot higher yeah. um, in the buyer pool yeah. than just your standard buyer in the marketplace. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah. You mentioned, just want to go back a step, yeah. uh, you, you mentioned a couple of suburbs, you know, Seaforth, Balgala, for example, Lamby Heights. Um, I mean this with all due respect. I hope mm. it comes out the right way. Um, <laughs> but some corridors can be very suburb fickle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, take the Northern Beaches, for example. It's like, People maybe have their heart set on, I want to be in this particular suburb, Mm -hmm. yeah? Um, And, I mean, I'm on the south coast, the rural Austin, me, Bull Eye, Winuna. 
uh, and up near Colcliffe, and people go, look, I really want to be in these areas. And they're like, the hubs, maybe they've got the shops, maybe they've got the infrastructure, the schools, for mm-hmm. example, that comes with it. Um, and it, you have to pay a higher price point to get into that particular sub, a bit like a Bondi Coogee, for example, right? Yeah. Mossman. Um, mm-hmm. These are, you, you may call them blue chip suburbs, but they're highly desirable. But people want to be in them. In your experience, are people fixated on a suburb or are you having to then maybe say, look, have you considered another area based on value or maybe it's got another element that you wouldn't know about because you haven't lived in that particular area as well? What's been we, well, your experience? Our, yeah, definitely our experience. It's, there's a, probably quite a few areas there, but just for <clears> one in particular, when we find, I'll focus on an out-of-area buyer. Yeah, And sure. yeah. when they've heard the media and the talks about where to buy and their yeah. friends. A lot of this comes down to where their friends live as well. Sure. So, And their friends are saying, you must move here, you must move here, it's the only place. And that's based on their experience living in that suburb. Mm. Um, there has There is talk, you know, like you said, Balgala, Seaforth, they're also a lot closer to the beach yes. and to Manly. Yes. And we're talking, as you know, Manly's a great draw card. So when yeah. you're buying a property in those areas around circulating around manly you're you're then exposing yourself when you go to sell to a much bigger buyer pool of people who know where manly is on the map yeah so if they're coming from overseas they're going to pay top dollar it's near manly we all know about manly Correct. you know and as you're going along the beach suburbs they're a lot closer to the beach and when you're on the beach mm. or at least 10 to 15 minutes from the beach um they're, they're going to demand more money so premium prices Spot on. Yep. yeah yeah and then is it, hey, look, you can get better bang for your buck somewhere else here? And, mm-hmm. again, that's part of part of your work to then coach mm-hmm. buyers to go, hey, look, you may pay X here, but those dollars will get you something a little bit more, it'll stretch you a little bit further. Maybe it's a bigger block. Maybe it's already renovated. Maybe it's got that's the fun room part. to grow into it as well. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay, I have to let go of my attachment to a particular suburb and, and almost be convinced on the value in a, an emerging or next, yeah. do, next door next, suburb. Well. Next door. So... We, we, when we went through that boom period with yeah. absolute gangbusters, what we also did find is people actually coming out and venturing further out as well because they couldn't afford or couldn't find what they were after in the affluent suburbs, yeah. you know, Balgala, Seaforth, Surrounds, yeah. close to the beach. And they did come out and we had a great experience showing people what they could buy in a, you know, a uh, the next suburb along. Yeah. And let me tell you, we're watching growth in all those suburbs. We're now just pushing further and further out. So as you mentioned, we go through a Lambie Heights. Beacon Hill was busting at it, it seems, you know, yeah. in terms of people couldn't get in there big enough, you know, uh, fast enough. Correct. Because um, they had huge blocks. Yes. And when people were climbing the walls, Great they views. just saw space, yeah. Yeah. views, huge blocks. Great areas, yeah. and then as you as you drop the pin further, you keep going out. We're now seeing growth areas such such as Eleanora Heights, mm. um, Ingleside, um, Ingleside, all the way through there. They're cu- they're up and coming, and yeah. we're just seeing movement around them now. But I think yeah, there's a lot to be said to to buying big blocks of land and yeah. and holding on to it for a little while. Yeah, well said. Yeah, one of the other big um, discussion points around Northern Beach has been infrastructure. So I guess it's been one mm. of the Pros and cons, you've got a great location, but sometimes the traffic becomes one of those barriers. Yeah. And yeah. Suburbs, um, that's where suburbs then become uh, a real point of difference. Take me through, from your knowledge, what some of the challenges with the infrastructure, yeah. what's happening, what, where is it up to at the moment? Uh, I think we had the election go through and we were guns ho and moving forward with um, the Beaches Link. Yeah. Now, that they've paused that at the moment, and it's really interesting because the northern beaches cannot sustain. Uh, what, well, in my this is my opinion. Absolutely, so, everything we <laughs> talk about is, is purely is opinion. opinion. Yeah. So, in my opinion, they can't sustain another growth spurt, which is what we're having. Yeah. To purely serviced by buses. <laughs> buses. Correct. It's insane. Yeah. And if we think, you know, I know we've got to, I'm all about preserving the environment and things like that and mm. f- without a doubt, but we've got to make some allowances now to be able to sustain how many people mm. are in these suburbs. And the government's putting in um, processes to do that at the moment. One in particular is the Beaches Link, which is supposed to be, which was supposed to start yeah. um, before all this happened. And 
And now that it hasn't, I mean, the, the traffic is still just as bad, but if not worse, now that people, you know, started flying back over and buying up property yeah. and the rents are through the roof. Yeah. Um, and and so we're seeing that area in Balgala and surrounds as a positive. If it goes in, we've got to look at the positives. You're going to have, say, 15 to 20 minutes off your drive time to the western suburbs if that tunnel goes through yeah. and to the crow's nest. Yeah. which alleviates military road all the way through and down, which means the traffic's going to be a lot less. People aren't going to be as infuriated, you know, in travelling in the mornings and people can get from A to B a lot faster. Sure thing. Which is great. It also then makes your property price go up. Correct. Don't know how much how much it'll go up yet because we don't know what it's going to look like. Yeah. Um, so there's a big grey area there at the moment, but I think it's there's positives and negatives for both 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 sections. Yeah. Then one of the other positives is they've done the freeway up uh, French's Forest and Surrounds. Yeah. That cuts all your time to get to Chatswood. So people are moving further out now, up your Avalon Way, mm. and they're driving to the city at 7 o'clock in the morning and still getting there on time by 8.30. Yeah. So we're finding a lot of people um, venturing further out as well just to get away from, um, I guess, all the traffic and, okay. and noise. But it's positive as well. Mm. You know, it can be a negative and positive. Absolutely. Is there any plans to move? And again, purely opinion on what you mm. know of, but what happens if the project hasn't started with the government and there's a chance they move the goalpost and mm. change where it's going to go to. So how does a buyer stay abreast of some of these changes, for example? Is it a town plan or is it being plugged mm-hmm. into buyer's agents? Because what you don't want to happen is buy and then realise that you've bought right next to a smokestack, for example, or right where they're going to do road work for the next couple of years. So, Aaron, this is really – this is – it's very difficult to predict. Mm. Um, we've had a couple of s- scenarios um, recently that we you know was brought to our attention. We do as much as we can by sending links as possible to the clients. They yeah. have to have a look themselves as well. The problem with the reports that are online, they're thousands and thousands of pages. Right. We're talking things like this big. Yeah. And there might be one line in there or something in there that you you're just not going to pick up. Se- secondly, when you have that um, information online, the, they change it. The council oh, change I'm it. Sure. <laughs> so one minute you're saying, "Oh, we've got Judith Street exit. Oh, they're moving that now, and that's in Seaforth." Yeah, they've moved it, and someone's gone and bought like <laughs> there now that now the traffic's going that way. There's nothing in the paperwork now, unfortunately, from the government and the councils to say that. Yeah, and that is unfortunately. Such I guess a it's a risk area. that we're going to take. Risk. It's a risk that we all take when we buy, which is we can't actually control, control. Where the, what the government does. Local yeah, councils make councils decisions, do. for example, but. Uh, they they are so I mean in we've got French's Forest um, and surrounds in that local area there they're putting they they're putting in new traffic lights right they're putting mm. in um, roundabouts and things like that we we have no knowledge of that because that's what the council have decided to do and and again they change those goalposts yeah so we can only we can only do as much as we can um, you know, to buy, if the buyer wants to buy it and they fall in love with the house and yeah. they love the backdrop, there's nothing we can do. Yeah. You know, we, we say, look, we don't advise it. However, it's it's entirely the heart, up to you. The heart wants what the heart wants. The heart wants, wants if you, well, we don't advise it, but yeah. you want you want in this area, you want to walk to the shops, you wanted these areas. So, it's enti- again, it's entirely up to them yeah. what they decide. Um, but like you, you, you can't, can't say buy the red one, but we really like the blue. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we have to put them in. Look, we do as much as we possibly can to give them the bit, as much info. And once we do that, um, it's up entirely their decision whether or not they'd mm. like to buy. So we don't push people into buying anything at all. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's, uh, I guess the buyer, is, the tough. client is always right. But, yeah, you want to you want to guide them, lead them to help make them yeah. good quality choices or decisions that they, you know, they've got confidence to make as well. Um, when you look at the northern beaches, what's – what are some areas that you think, I'm not asking for hotspots or anything like that, but what do you see as like, hey, look, there's maybe some gentrification, some modernisation in some of these suburbs as well, or they're up and coming. Mm-hmm. What are you seeing on the ground at the moment? Uh, Mona Vale at okay. the moment for me is a big tick, um, great growth area. Um, I think that's a fantastic suburb. Yeah. It just seems to be uh, on the map. You've got the new surf club that was built. It's it's 
very modern mm. and it just it blends into the, the landscape of the beach. It's a great draw card for a lot of tourists and people as they come along. Yeah. So there's good infrastructure going in there. Um, look, oh, and I think DY and Brookvale always get a bit of a bad rap. Okay. The All I know is that the council are moving forward and making way for um, a lot of integrated businesses, like residential and businesses. Ah, right, so yeah. combining, you know, your, your warehouse style operation with your living at the back. Yeah. And they're really starting to move. It's quite dynamic, actually, mm. move with the times with that. Nice. Um, so I think when people are looking at buying, you've got to go where the, the, the transport is, for mm. sure, yeah. one. Um, and, and also... You can't go wrong close to the beach. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, like if you can afford it. If you can it. afford it, you can't right. go wrong close to the beach, um, especially investors. I mm. mean, you, you want something that's that's going to be attractive for someone who who ordinarily um, is going to rent the whole of their lives. Yeah. And their lifestyle means I'm going to rent. I can't afford to buy. So Correct. do you know what? I'm going to buy somewhere. I'm going to rent where I want to live. Yeah. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. I really appreciate it. I, and just before we finish, and I hope you don't mind, yeah, we're talking about your own personal, uh, your, your own personal side yeah. of what you're doing. You mentioned like you've done some, some flipping work um, in a shifting market, mm. for example. How is it important to, to get the timing right when you're say flipping a property as well? Absolutely, uh, we, without a doubt. So I recently purchased a property. Um, I've done a couple of little flips along the way, yeah. but I recently purchased a property which I thought ordinarily I'd get straight in and get the kitchen done and this, this is property that needs to be renovated. Yeah. Thought, I've done this plenty of times before, but then I watched the market and it shifted quite rapidly. Yeah. So straight away I had to go into recon, what am I doing now? Am I going to rent it or get this done? So um, instead of the renovation, I decided to rent it. And right. it's, yeah, it's currently rented at the moment. Yeah. But um, yeah, you definitely need to know when to put your property on as an investor. Yeah. Um, that's for sure. As a, fair, as a home buyer, as a seller and a buyer, I really think the goalpost should not change. I mean, you, if you if you need to upgrade in the market you're in, then upgrade. Okay, you can't be dictated by the media and this and that. As long as your finances and you talk to someone like yourself regarding, you know, the the accounts and the broker side of things yeah. in terms of the, you know, the nitty gritty of how much you can borrow, yeah. and that they're not left left um, out to dry. Yes, you you really should be buying in in when you're ready. Yeah. And I can't stipulate it enough. It'd be, it'd be all great for you, but, you know, could buy, buy you know, under the radar, low, low the high. high. It, it's it just, it's life nice. gets in the way. You, you, you're growing, your family might be growing and you, you really can't, yeah, mm. you, you can't be guided by media. You have to just go by your gut feel and, hey, this is, yeah, I need to buy, I need yeah. to sell. Perfect. Really appreciate it. Appreciate your insights. Yeah, appreciate your time. Great to see you again. You too. You too, I'm sure. Uh, we'll be checking back in in terms of how, the, how, how your neck of the woods is faring because I feel like it's one of these areas when you look at it, it's like, okay, yeah, we've come off a really significant high, mm. but in terms of like price, let's say we have price drops, how much do these drop in comparison to maybe other suburbs that maybe may experience, I don't know, call it mortgage stress, higher fluctuations versus the fundamentals of not going to change in these particular pockets that are close to the beach, highly owner-occupied Population, mm -hmm. density, attractiveness, for example, good infrastructure. Um, we you definitely can't need, change. You can't change those dynamics. No, we yeah. definitely need to come back and revisit this because we've got data that yeah. is about two to three months behind being going in because right. everyone's so far behind. And I think once we once that all gets tallied up and put in, we'll be able to see a complete shift. Mm. And um, the conversation around the issues with the mortgage rates yeah, will okay. probably be going through that next year. Yeah, spot on. Spot on. Thanks very much. Okay. That's a wrap for another episode of the Australian Property Investment Podcast. If you do want to reach out to Rebecca Jane Hall and her team at Hallmark, we'll include their details, website, socials. So if you do want to check them out, if you're thinking about buying or investing in the Northern Beaches, definitely someone that we've used personal experience share. A lot of our clients have used and that and I've got great feedback, which is why I've brought back in today so thank you very much you're welcome uh, if you've got any questions any comments any feedback we'd love to hear from you drop us a comment give us a review as well if you found this helpful that's a wrap for another episode and we'll, we'll talk to you soon thanks